again. Dave Walker, your Connect Guru, back with that information I promised on Adobe Connect Events Analytics. True or false? The purpose of your online event is for the betterment of mankind. I guess that could be true in a couple of cases, but for the vast majority of us, it's patently false. The purpose of our events is usually to generate interest and identify qualified leads. So what tools does Adobe Connect 9 give you to help you with those objectives? We've already talked about those rich landing pages and email communications that we get with Connect 9. But you may be wondering what happens after the event. What kind of data analysis tools do you get? Let's have a look. Here's a typical Connect event. Under the Reports tab, we get our first glimpse of the data that was collected for our event. Note here that we have this aggregate user data, like the number invited, the number registered, pending, approved, denied, and attended. This is good information, and Connect has always given us this kind of data. But for purposes of following up with qualified leads, it leaves something to be desired, really. So what kind of new reports does Connect 9 offer? Well, first I want to mention that all of the attendee data can be downloaded as a CSV file by clicking on this button. You can use a spreadsheet application like Excel or a database application to organize and analyze the retrieved data. But it's at the bottom of this first report page that things start to get interesting. Here we can see the first sign of the Adobe Site Catalyst integration with Connect 9, a conversion funnel report that gives us a clear visual representation of the process the registrant goes through. It starts with how many visited the event information page. Of those, how many visited the registration page where they could enter the information we want to collect from them. Then how many actually completed the registration and how many logged into the event. This is all useful data. For example, if we see a large drop-off between the people who visited the registration page and those who completed the registration form, then we need to ask why. Are we asking for too much information? Is the form difficult to complete? Armed with this kind of information, we can modify our approach for future events with the goal of getting better results. Also note that at the bottom of the conversion funnel, we see the number of qualified leads. So what constitutes a qualified lead? How do we gauge lead qualification? This is important because we want to focus our resources on following up with people that will give us the highest probability of achieving our goals. If we return to the top of the page, we'll see some additional options. One of these is the registration link. It's here that we can define our criteria for lead qualification. So we could determine that qualified leads only include those who attended our event for at least 25 minutes. If that's the case, we just make sure the checkbox is checked and enter 25 in this box. We can also use our registration questions to qualify our leads. For example, we can set up a rule that says we're only interested in people who use webinars for marketing purposes. So one of our registration questions might be, what do you use webinars for? And we only want those whose answer was marketing webinars. We may also want to set up a rule that says only people who want to be contacted are qualified leads. For this, we may have a poll question in our seminar room that asks the question, would you like our consultant to contact you? And set the lead qualification criteria to only those who answered yes. By the way, you can add multiple rules for both the registration question criteria and the poll question criteria. As we move down this same page, we find the campaign report. This gives us basically the same data that we saw for the conversion funnel, but it's broken down by the different campaign IDs we used in the link to the registration page. If you roll your mouse over one of the bars in the chart, you will see a tooltip style information box that tells you the exact number of users who reached that step. This chart helps you understand which of your campaigns is getting results and allows you to analyze those results in comparison with other campaign results. Next, we have a breakdown of how our registration questions were answered. For each of our questions, there are a series of bars representing all the different ways that question was answered. If we roll our mouse over one of the bars, we'll see that tooltip style information box with the data for that particular answer. Next, under the Content tab of Reports, we'll see the engagement data 
for all the activity that occurred during our event. I should note that the engagement data is only available if you use a seminar room or a virtual classroom and only if you have the engagement dashboard open during the meeting. The engagement report is very cool indeed. The green line in the chart indicates the attendance level. The purple line indicates the level of engagement of the group as a whole. The chart reflects a timeline for the entire time the meeting was open and tells us when we had the best level of engagement. This is measured by participation in poll questions, the chat pod, Q&A, file downloads, and attendee status settings. So looking at this chart, if we see a point where the engagement of the attendees spiked, we can analyze what happened at that point in our meeting, and if possible, do more of that kind of activity, since that activity is getting people engaged. Moving down the page, we can analyze some of this data in more detail. Here we see the chat activity and the Q&A usage, including how many of the questions were answered using the Q&A pod. Next we see the file download activity. Not only do we see how many downloads were done for each file, but we see a representation of the total number of attendees for comparison. The poll activity chart is similar. We see the total number of participants and then how many answered each question. Next is the attendee status usage report, showing us all of the different status changes that occurred during our meeting. And at the bottom of the page, we have our attendee list with the time each attendee entered the meeting room and the time they left. As you can see, the analytics capabilities of Adobe Connect 9 are much more robust than previous versions. But if this is still not enough for you, then you should know that you also have the option of fully integrating Adobe Site Catalyst into your Adobe Connect account. This requires that you purchase Adobe Site Catalyst separately, but it gives you all of those robust reporting features found only in the Site Catalyst product. And there you go. Adobe Connect Events Analytics is a beautiful thing. If you have any other questions about Adobe Connect, please don't hesitate to contact me via the information on the screen and subscribe to this YouTube channel to be advised of future videos we post. Until next time, this is your Connect Guru.